What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you for tuning in. And in today's video, I'm going to do something that you guys have been wanting me to do for a while. And I am going to call hot, warm, and cold motivated seller leads that are coming into our system from either cold calling, telemarketing, or from Facebook leads. I'm going to be calling these leads uh, in front of you so that way you can see how I train my team to talk to motivated sellers, how I talk to motivated sellers, and so you can learn how to talk to motivated sellers better so you can get more deals and lock up bigger deals. So with that being said, let's get right into it. So I actually haven't been on the phones for almost three years because I have scaled my business. I have positioned myself into a CEO position where I look over the company and play the game more like chess rather than checkers. And I have, you know, I had seven acquisition managers not too long ago on the phones, calling the leads. Since then, I have um, tightened up the operation a little bit. And now we have four acquisition managers on the phone. Um, so now I've decided to jump back on the phone a little bit for fun and try to lock up some deals. And uh, it's been fun getting my skills back up when it comes to talking to motivated sellers. And I actually am able to lock up a lot of deals and I've had a lot of success by myself jumping back on the phones a little bit. Last month was March of 2023 and I locked up 24 contracts myself, 24 deals under contract myself. Uh, most of the deals came from Facebook leads, which is working out great for us right now. But like I said, I locked up 24 deals in one month, which is super amazing. So now I'm back on the phones, uh, cranking out deals left and right. And uh, yeah, I'm just excited to show you how I talk to motivated sellers so that way you can have the same success. Now, I've been doing this for so long that, you know, I'm really direct with the sellers. I build a little bit less rapport. I lollygag a little bit less and I get right to the point because I'm ready to go. I'm ready to lock up a deal today. And so you're going to see that how I talk to these sellers is pretty interesting. So I got my dialer queued up here uh, with the new leads in the dialer um, and some leads that are interested already. Um, and we're going to talk to them. So let's uh, let's do it. Let me go ahead and press call. All right. And we're calling. So let's see, we're calling the first leads right now. We're going to get somebody on the phone. Let's see, let's see. I got my uh, call-in system on one screen and I, hello? Hello? Oh. Hey, uh, Ray, calling to give you the offer for your property. You filled out a form online. Do you have a second to yeah. talk? Awesome. So first off, a couple questions for you. Is there any particular reason why you're interested in selling the property? Uh, well, no, I was just, I was just uh, waiting off to, to see what's, what's happening, you know, because uh, I just inherited a house down in the country. My dad passed away, and, and I no longer need this house. Okay. So this was your mom and dad's house. Uh, they passed away recently. Sorry for your loss. Um, no, yeah, yeah, but no, this is, I'm, I'm living in a different house. Got it. So this I'm property is vacant. House. This property is yeah, vacant right parents, now, and you inherited it. Yeah. Okay. With my brother and sister, you know. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah. How old, do yeah. you know how old the roof is on the property? I guess it's probably about 10 or 15 years old, but it's in, it's in good sense. You can do a re-roof, you know, it's put a re-roof on it. Okay. No problem. Flat 412 pitch house. Got it. It's about 960 square foot or something like that. It's a little, it was a three bedroom, one bath, but whoever I bought it from knocked it down to a two bedroom, one bath. Okay. Um, yeah. sounds good. So how, do you have a central AC unit on it? And if so, how old is that air conditioning unit? Uh, no, it doesn't have no uh, AC, uh, central air. Okay. And then as, as far yeah. as the. We yeah. have heat, baseboard heat, which I don't need. Okay. As, as far as the uh, inside. I did, I did put a two. 
two uh, two garage uh, detached. I put a, a, a I put a garage. It's a detached garage, two car garage. Okay. As far as uh, the inside condition of the property, is it in pretty good shape, or could it use some work? Yeah, it's a fixer upper. Fixer upper. It's going to need a window, carpeting. Okay. You know, painting, you know, a bunch of, bunch of stuff. You know. Okay, yeah, sounds good. To, great locations, 10 minutes to the VRE, you know, where if people want to travel to D.C. to to go to work, uh, it's 10 minutes down the street from the train and, and yeah. any retail store you can imagine. Yeah. So it's in a great location, super great location. Okay. Um, how long has it been vacant for? Uh, it's not vacant now. It's not vacant. No, I'm living in it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm living in it. I'm living in it. I'm just trying to weigh all my ops to see what the best office will be. Got it. How much are you to looking to get for the house? Well, I've, I owe about 160 in it, so I'm going to need at least 175, 180 just to make a profit off of it because I, okay. I don't want to just give it up for just what I owe out of it. You know right, I mean? right. Okay, so you're looking yeah. to get between 175 to 180. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's a fair. I think that's a fair price. You know, you probably have to dump about 25, there's 30,000 into it, and and the uh uh. Like new. Okay. Saying twenty five yeah. thirty into it, twenty five thirty into it. Okay. Uh, if we were able to make yeah, you an offer, you have to do all. You don't have to do all. Probably more. You know, you can change it back to a three bedroom. All you got to do is just knock this one wall out, put another wall on. So, so right now, how, why is it not a three bedroom anymore? You you closed one of the rooms off. I don't like to say when I first when I first bought it, somebody had twisted over to a uh, uh excuse me a two bedroom which the master bedroom is just like oh the double uh, the master uh, bedroom's uh, big I see pretty big okay got it so if I was yeah. able to make you an offer around what you're looking to get you know um around one seventy five to one uh eighty. How soon would you be ready to move, or how soon would you be looking to do something? Well, there's a, I've got I've got this month to make my decision. So you know, so I've uh, I've uh, talked to my brother about it and stuff, and you know, you really don't want to do it, but you know, it's uh, it's uh, just something that uh, that uh, we we're uh, contemplating. Got it. No, right well, on. Well, it'll be a better month. It'd be about. A I cannot hear this guy. Okay, yeah. so you you would yeah. need like you would need like thirty days to move. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay, that yeah. sounds good. Okay, so let me let me run my numbers here. Um, give me one second. Yeah, look at it. Look on the you know you can Google it up. You'll see there's a three. You can see it in this fall season right now. Yeah. The house sits up on the hills. It's very very nice. It can't it. There's there's wood behind it, but uh, you can buy it back there, and uh, it's just a place for someone that just wants a good summer home. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, let me see here. Uh, let's see. Give me one second. Yes, yeah, sir. Sure, sure. <laughs> And it's a circular driveway too. It goes all the way around the back of the house, all the way around to the, to the garage. Mm -hmm. Now, on, on the side, is the house does it have siding or is it stuck up? On the yeah, outside? it's got siding on, it's on the on the side, on the back, the front's a brick. What brick front on the, Okay, what's what is the siding in good shape or no? Yeah, it's in pretty good shape. Yeah, I mean it's been here since I've owned the house. I think I've owned the house. Okay. And um, it's got a nice front porch on it. The deck stands the whole thing in the house. You got to repair the, the base of the deck. Good, you just got to repair the hand rest. Okay, I you hear you. You got to get the new rims and steps and stuff like that. So, a uh, real nice quiet neighborhood. So There's no HOA here. There's so, no HOA. You do, please do what you want. 
So, so my um, math, my math's coming out around one sixty five for it. Yeah. But I think we could get. Yeah. Close, I think we could get closer to one seventy. Um, is that something you'd be interested in doing? Yeah. Well, like I said, I'm I'm, I'm going going to take this whole month and 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 and, and talk to people and see what offers. That's the best offer, and I'm going to get that. Okay, so you're going to take this month so, to talk to different people and get offers. What would I have to pay? Sure. What would I have to offer you today to to get you to sell me the house today? Uh, yeah, well, it would be it would be uh, one ninety nine. One ninety nine. Yes. Yeah, it'd be one ninety nine. Okay. Yeah, and, and you'd be ready, you'd be ready to start the process today. Uh, uh, not today. <laughs> no, not today. <laughs> okay. If I offered you, today. let's say, let's say I offered you one ninety nine, when would you be ready to start the process? It would probably be in a couple weeks. Okay. A couple weeks. Would you just need to talk with the family, or? It's going to be a family decision, and, and um, I'm putting in a couple other offers. And you'd want to get a couple other offers before you accepted anything. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Couple weeks. Okay. So you're shopping around for offers. Okay, so I'm gonna do this. Right now I'm at 165, 170. But that being said, you know, I can always go into the finance department and try to push the offer as high as possible uh for you. You know, it's yeah. kind of just like, hey, what's the back office? What's the finance department gonna approve for the property? And so I'm on your side yeah. here to get you the most that I can. What the algorithm's saying yeah. right now is 170 max but i can always try to push that higher so i will do that for you and i'm going to follow up with you in a in a week or so and see where you're at with selling it that's fine uh, and hopefully we can work together i would love to do business with you um let me do this do you have a pen yeah, you and get a fine property this is a this is a very very high-end area stafford county in, 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 in Fredericksburg, virginia it's, yeah it's a growing population around here Billion dollar houses are up the street. Right across the street, there's over five hundred thousand dollar houses. Yeah, right on, right on. You, on. you got a yeah. pen and paper handy by chance? Uh, no, I'm actually in my truck. Okay, let me make sure. Uh, I think I have your email right. Uh, yeah, I have your email. Yeah. I, I'm gonna email you over my information before you sign a deal with anybody else or you do anything with anybody else. Make sure to give me a call back. Because our, our department, yeah. our finance department does try to beat any offers you have. So that way we can buy the property. Sure. So before you make a deal with anybody else, touch base with me again, okay? Sure, no problem. All right. No and problem and Ray, all. Ray, my name is Jacob with National Home Buyers. Uh, it's been great talking with you yeah. today. And I'll follow up with you every okay, week or so, every week or so, and, no uh, and try to buy this thing from you, okay? Okay, I look forward to hearing. All right, Ray. Other than that, you have an amazing day. Okay, Jacob. Yeah, you right. too, bro. See All right. Bye. Later. Uh huh. All right. So we're gonna shoot him an email right now. Uh, he's gonna be shopping the offer, and as you can see, what I tried to do was tried to figure out what price do I have to be at today for you to not shop for other offers and just sign with me. But it sounds like there's no way he is signing an offer today. Uh, he's going to shop no matter what. Even if I gave him the 199 he wouldn't sign today. He needs a couple weeks. So this is one of those things where we're not going to show all our cards. Yes, I could come up to probably 185 but I'm not going to tell him that. I'm going to let him, you know, simmer for a bit, follow up every week, and make sure I make it known really clear to him, hey, don't sign anything with anybody else until you give me another call because I pride myself on beating other offers. Try to make that really clear. We're getting other calls coming back in. Let's see. Uh, I want to send this guy an email, so I'm going to remember to do that, but let's answer this call. This is a call for Jacob from Tell. Hello. Hello. Um, I'm at the phone call. Yeah, we were calling to give you the offer for your property. You filled out a form online. Do you have a second to chat? Uh, yeah. Awesome. So yeah, uh, I got your information pulled back up here. Uh, so it's the 631 New Park, right? Right. 
Okay, awesome. So uh, first off, a couple questions for you. Is there any particular reason why you're interested in selling the property? Um, no, not officially. Okay, so there's no real reason you're just kind of looking to move or? Yeah, it was more of an uh, investment property that needs some work. Not much, but um, I'd rather just sell wholesale instead of trying to renovate and rent it out. Okay. Um, okay. How long ago did you buy it? Um, pretty recent. Okay. About a month ago. Okay. Is it vacant? Yes. How much are you looking to get for it? Um, I'd say it needs about maybe 20K in repair. So um, with that being considered in the market value, um, I, I wouldn't go no more than 60,000 for it. You want 60,000? It's still in a pretty good condition. It's still in a pretty good condition. It just needs, you know, touch, love, and care. Did you say it needs 20K? About, uh, roughly, about that. Okay. Uh, it's a really small town, you know. Right. Where's the nearest big, bigger city, and how far of a drive is it? Um, the nearest biggest city. Um, I'm not sure. Okay. You live out by here, or no? No, um... I travel a lot. I um invest the properties all over the country. Uh, I would say that near it's, it's near um I would York, Pennsylvania, York, PA. I would yeah, say okay. Or or closer to Maryland. Okay. Um, I'm gonna look into this a little bit more and get back to you. It was built in 1933. Is that right? Correct. Okay, and you want sixty thousand for it, right? Correct. All right, I'm going to have somebody else in the office give me a second opinion on this because it's a really small town. I'm just not really sure. So I'm going to put it over on his desk and uh, see what he thinks, and I'll get back to you. All right, sounds like a plan. All right, you have a good rest of your day. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> okay, so that one's really rural. Um, average days on market, though. Um, there's notating there. The average days on market is 31 days though, but it's a really rural town and it might just be basing that off of a couple sales. So the average day, you know, it could take a while to sell something. Like I see one that sold for 31 and then in 31 days. And then I see one that sold for 109 days. It's a really small town. So we not, might not be able to find a buyer and it might take too long to sell. So it might not be something that we're interested in picking up. We got another call coming in. Uh, this one is with a seller that I already have locked up. So let me pause the recording real quick and talk to them. All right, I'm back. That is a probate situation where we're trying to get the paperwork done with a different seller. Um, so let's keep going, though. So I want to go back to that first guy, send him my info so that way he can get back to me. You know, the one that's shopping for offers. I want to make sure he keeps me in mind, you know, there's not much you can do when they're set in stone on shopping for more offers other than saying, call me back before you sell to anybody else, because I'll beat offers. You know, that's kind of the best thing you can do in that situation. So I'm going to send him an email. Let's do that real quick. Cash offer for your property. Make sure to follow up with me. There is my info. There we go. Now, now he's going to stay in touch, hopefully. Okay, but let's move on. Let's keep going. So I just passed that over to one of my sales guys, that rural, that property that's in a really small town. So that way my, my guy can give me a second opinion on it. But let's keep going. All right, so we're dialing. 
All right, so we're dialing. Nobody's picking up. Come on, let's get somebody on the phone. Let's get somebody on the phone. No answer, no answer. Come on. Sometimes they're just not picking up. We got to get them on the phone. Come on. See, that's the thing, man. You got to you gotta make a lot of calls because you got to get people on the phone. If you're not getting people on the phone, you're not making progress. And you've got to try to talk to as many people, have as many conversations with motivated sellers as possible every single day. The more conversations with motivated sellers, the more deals you're going to get. Like, there's just no doubt about it. More calls, more conversations, more offers equals more deals. So that's the name of the game when it comes to wholesale and real estate. The more offers, the more property you can look at, the more conversations you can have. It's a numbers game at the end of the day. You got to get that volume up and you're going to increase that deal volume as well. So that's what you got to do. All right, come on. Nobody's picking up. Let's get them on the phone. There we go. This is a call for Jacob from. Hey, John, are you there? Yes. Awesome. Was calling to give you the offer for your property. Do you have a second to chat? Yeah, well, right now, it's, it's not no longer available for sale, but, but thanks a lot. Why is it not available for sale okay. anymore? Call him back. I want to know why it's not available for sale anymore. This lead came in two weeks ago and he didn't answer. We've been trying to reach this guy for a month now. Why is it not available for sale? Please leave your message. Got to dial him again and again until he answers. I want to know why it's not available for sale. It's not answering. We're gonna send him a text saying why. Why is it not available for sale anymore? Question mark. We're gonna see. But let's keep dialing. I'm trying to get somebody else on the phone. Hello, calling to give you the offer for your property. You filled out a form online. Are you there? Hello. Uh, they picked up, but then they hung up. So let's call them back. Let's call them back. This is a good property too. It's in a good area. So I've been trying to reach this one for two weeks since the lead came in, calling them multiple times every day. Let's see if they pick up again. Hello, are you there? Hey, it's Hillary. Can't get to the phone. Oh. No answer. Double dial. Hello? Hello. Hey, calling to give you the offer for your property. You filled out a form online a little while ago for it. Uh huh. Awesome. Yeah, I've been trying to reach you for a couple of weeks to make you that offer. Uh, so I'm glad you answered. Um. So I got the property pulled up here and I just have a couple questions for you. Is that okay? Yep. Okay. So first off, uh, is there any particular reason why you're interested in selling the property? Uh, yeah, there's a couple, there's a couple liens on it that are, um, I'm seeking foreclosure very soon. Okay. How, how long until your foreclosure, do you have an auction date already for the property or no? No, no. Okay, so you probably have another 60 days before you get foreclosed on? Possibly. Okay. Okay, we'll definitely be able to help you out, and I hope I can. What's the unit number? F72. 7272? Yeah, F says in Frank. Oh, okay. F72. F72. 
F seventy two. F is in Frank seven two. All right, let me let me find that quick. Sometimes it's hard to get the property to show up with uh, when it's a unit number. Um, yeah. How much are you looking to get for it? Uh, two hundred would be would be at, at the minimum would be nice. Okay, what do you owe on it? Uh, I don't know anything. Just um, the liens. There's uh, like a six thousand dollar lien and a ten thousand dollar lien. All right, let's see. 71, 72. There we go. Yeah. Uh, the name on title for this says Patricia. Yeah, that's my grandmother. Sweet. She passed the way I inherited it, so it has not been through probate. Okay, so you're going to have to do probate or no? Well, um, I can't sell it until it goes through probate. It's from what I've been told, but... Um, okay, well, I'll help you figure that out. You might be able to do, like, a no administration necessary or a small estate affidavit, which makes it a lot quicker and easier and more cost-effective when it comes to probate, so... Yeah, so there, you know, there's kind of, like, a, um, a, a closer time constraint situation um, uh, regarding the, the unit lead. next door. Um, my mother was is renting the unit next door from a realtor who um, wants to buy this unit. Uh, she has not paid her rent in quite some time and he just gave her a pay in 14 days or vacate notice. This this unit um, is her and mine. We both inherited it, it was her yeah. mother's. Okay. Um, so she needs her money in order to remain living where she's living yeah. like, within like two weeks. And so, or we're going to have to make this deal with this realtor and that would put us out of here in a year with a uh, very minimal payment, uh, like 800 bucks a month for 30 years. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to Yeah, go no, that's not good. Years. You'll lose out on all the, all the, everything yeah, you did. Everything. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I think I'm going to be able to help you out though, uh, which is good. Now, that means we're in a time crunch. So if she doesn't pay in 14 days, you're saying you're going to have to work with him to, you're going to have to sell him this one or. Yeah, pretty much. Why, why is that? Why, why doesn't she just vacate and move into yours for the time being? There's no room. There's no room. I have three children mm. and, uh, he lives with a, a boyfriend of hers and well yeah, there's absolutely problem no room. is pro so you're saying basically we need to buy the property from you in two weeks right <laughs> yeah well we yeah, could so we could do that around. we could do that but it, it just kind of depends on the title and the probate situation and if yeah and if if that's a problem then that's a problem so is there any way to hold that guy off a little bit or maybe uh, uh Maybe she could move in just for like an extra week or something, or there's just no way she could move in with you for a little while. Well, there's not really any way for her to move in for, I just had a baby yesterday or two days ago. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. And, uh, okay. And there's no way for, uh, there's no way for, uh, her to stay with anybody else, any other family or anything for a little bit? No, no. Okay. Yours is a two bedroom, two bath, or is it a two, one and a half? Two, one and a half. Okay. And it's 965 square feet. Is that right? Right. As far as the inside of the property, could it use some work? Uh, a little bit. What type of flooring do you have throughout it? Carpet and uh, a laminate. Okay, what type of countertops do you have in the kitchen? Are they laminate or are they like granite, like a rock? Laminate. Um, I'm gonna put you on the phone with my husband. Okay. Um, because I I got babies to take care of. You're good. Okay. That works. Hello. Hey, how you doing? Hello. Good. Good, good. So yeah, I I've been trying to reach you guys for a couple of weeks. So I wish I reached you earlier because it's on a time crunch. But I think we're gonna be able to help you out on it. Um. Let me let me run some quick math on it. Um, I know uh, sh your wife said uh, that she you guys want to get around two hundred thousand for it. Is that right? 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, let me see. Take a look at this comparable sale real quick. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. My math's coming out at 172,000. What do you think about that? Uh, if you could do it in two weeks, I'd go with it. If, if we could do it in two weeks, you'd go with it? Yeah. Okay. If you could do it. Yeah, I think. Hey! Yeah. 172,000. Yeah, well, you know, I take that to the lowest. If, if, if you could do it. Yeah. We could do it in two weeks. It's just a matter of the title. So let's let's, let's let's get the process started on it right now and then and then I'll get I'll get title search ran on it ASAP to find out what we got to mm -hmm. do with the title if there's an if you know maybe with just the death certificate we'll be fine so we'll see um uh -huh. mm -hmm. so let me do this uh let me go ahead and uh who signs for it you or your wife your wife right yeah okay so let me go ahead and uh, I got your email here. It is, uh, okay, I got it. Um, it's the Yahoo email. Uh, Pixie chick, yeah, that's yours, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right, I'm gonna send this over right now. Are you able to get that email open while we're on the phone? Uh, my phone just broke, so no. Okay. So like she might be able to know what she's looking at. Yeah, that would be great. So that way I could go Where over. Are you guys out of Tacoma? Uh, yeah, we have an office in Tacoma, yep. Right. I'm calling from our headquarters in Scottsdale, Arizona, though. Right. Okay. Now, what did you email her? Say that again, I'm sorry? What did you email her? Uh, I'm going to email her the agreement. For us to buy it for one hundred and seventy-two thousand, mm -hmm. and that's with the that's you take the the burden of the liens too. Then yeah, well the liens comes right. out of the one seventy-two. Wow, uh, is that okay? So I don't know. That's pretty low. Okay. Now if one seventy-two, if you took the liens, sure. So you said the liens are for for six and ten. Six and ten. What are the liens? How much? Not quite that much. It's like five five thousand six hundred for a middle school yeah. and then it's almost ten for the hundred years. Is that much? Yeah. It's just an HOA probably about fifteen, HOA and uh Okay and uh a medical uh, bill. You no, know, I'll tell you what I yeah the one with split it with you. Okay. Normally the liens, yeah, normally the this you know, out of the seller's proceeds the liens come out. How how about this? I think I could get the the finance department to agree to push it up to one hundred and seventy five thousand. Would that work? Gives you a little bit more there to cover to help out with the liens. Uh, well, yeah. Let's see if you can do it in two weeks. One seventy five. I mean, okay. Because you you can't the the last ones that sold around here. Of course, you know, it was, I think it was 270. Yeah. Of course, the kitchens were updated in the bathroom, but the galley kitchen, you know, in a little bathroom, doesn't take much to, you well, know, we, we can 15, get it. I could have this, the whole place looking beautiful, you know? Yeah, we can get it done in two if weeks. We can get it done in two weeks as long as, and I'm going to get title working on that title to figure out what we got to do on that as soon as possible. So let me ask you this, looking at the calendar, what day do you need us to close by? No. Uh, yeah, two weeks would, would, would be it. Uh, so that puts us at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Eight. That puts us at like the 26th, 
Does that work? Yeah, yeah. Okay, the 26th. Um, and if we can get it done sooner, like if everything's ready, we will. Um, mm -hmm. So, okay, so I just emailed it over. You're going to see an email come through from National Home Buyers from DocuSign. Right. Um, and then once you get that, are you able to open it up while we're on the phone so I could go over it with you? Mm -hmm. Say that again, I'm sorry. Well, she's going to do that right now. What was your name? Because I got to go to work. Yeah, my name is Jacob, and we're, I'm I'm um, with National Home Buyers. All right, here she is. She's going to open it up to you. Okay, sweet. And then I'll go over with her, get her to sign it, and we'll get working on this. Okay. Yeah. Hillary, are you there? Yep, I'm here. Okay, so I'm opening. So let's go. Uh, Let's go over this. Uh, let me know when you see that email from National Home Buyers. Got it. Okay. So once you click review, it'll open up the agreement for you. Um, you're gonna let me know when you see purchase agreement for real estate at the top of your screen. Yeah. Okay. You see purchase yeah. agreement for real estate. Yeah. Uh oh. Popping yep, and then click uh, click review. You there still? Hello, Hillary? Yep, yep, I'm still here. Awesome. You see, let me know when you have the document open. Okay. Uh, yep. Okay. So you see purchase agreement for real estate at the top of your screen? Yep. Okay. Awesome. So it says this agreement is made on this day between you and our company. Uh, well, it says Patricia's name um, for the property address. Um, we're going to be buying the property in as is condition. Uh, any like fixtures such as like blinds and stuff that's built into the property, you got to leave there, obviously. We're going to be purchasing it for the 175,000 cash and then terms, closing costs, attorney fees, title fees, transfer fees are to be paid by the buyer. So all the closing costs are going to be paid by us. So none of that's going to come out of your pocket. Any taxes, liens, encumbrances, HOA dues, or anything you owe on the property, you're going to be responsible for paying. Again, the property is sold as is. Uh, seller to provide buyer with permission to access the property if we need to. Um, this offer is contingent on clear title. So we're going to run a title search and get the title to be clear. Um, the title report and survey will be ordered promptly. So we're going to order that title report right away. Like I was mentioning seller warrants that the property is free from hazardous substances and isn't violating any, uh, zoning or environmental building health codes or ordinances, um, which I'm sure it's not, which that just means that there's no like dangerous chemicals in the property. Uh, risk of loss, if, if subject property is damaged prior to transfer, transfer, buyer can still buy the property. No judgment, seller warrants that there's no judgments threatening the equity, which you've already made clear there's a couple liens, which that's not a problem. And then that there's no pending bankruptcy. Um, and then process, uh, buyer arrived at the offer by carefully evaluating current market values in the area, then estimating expenses and making projections on possible profits. So it's telling you a little bit about our process. And then acceptance. This agreement will become a binding agreement once signed by both of us. And then uh, 14, this agreement makes up the entire agreement. Any modification must be made in writing between us. Um, and then the close of escrow, I put the 26. The title company is to be determined. We'll use one that we use uh, that's close to you. And that's it. There's a spot for your autograph, uh, for your signature. And then there is a spot for the date uh, for you to sign and once you sign it'll send it back to me i'll sign and then it'll send you a final copy uh just let me know if you have any questions okay i think i'm good okay i just got your signature and i am gonna sign and it's gonna send you a copy back um and then what i'm gonna do 
is I'm going to get on this right away with our title company to figure out what needs to be done with the title. And uh, just what I can say is in the meantime, um, try to, you know, work your situation out where, you know, just in case we needed a little bit more time, figure out if you're going to be able to delay or she could stay anywhere. Uh, but, but I'm going to do everything I can to get it done as soon as possible. Okay. okay. All right. Well, other than that, um, this reach, you can reach me at this number throughout the process if you have any questions, but I'm going to go ahead, call our title company right now and uh, get working on this. Um, oh, and Hillary, one more thing. Uh, if you could, when you get a chance, if you could send us some photos of the property when you get a chance, uh, just one of every room. And then if you could send us like a picture of the front of it uh, and the balcony, if there is one, that would be great. Okay. All right. And uh, let me give you my cell phone number. So that way you can send those photos to the right uh, number because the number we're talking on right now, unfortunately can't receive photos. Okay. Let, let, let me know when you're ready. Ready. All right. My cell phone number is. Okay. You want to repeat that back to me so I'm sure you have it right? That is right. So, yeah, today, if you could just send us those photos of the property, and I'm going to get working on this right away. And, uh, okay. This is the best number to reach you back at, right? Absolutely. Okay, because you, ca you came into our system 16 days ago, and I wasn't able to reach you since, so I just want to make sure yeah. I get a hold of you. I was having a baby. <laughs> I, I hear that. Okay, well, I'm glad the baby's uh, happy and healthy, and, uh, and, you know, congrats. That's awesome. Thank you. Yep. All right, well, I'll talk to you later today. Okay, bye. Bye. Bingo. Let's go. Deal locked up. Let's go. This one's pretty good too. It's worth like 300 grand and I just locked it at 175. But there is a probate situation here and some title issues that we got to get sorted out. So hopefully those don't kill the deal. But let's go. First one of the day. And this one's juicy. That's at least a 30, 40K assignment fee. Let's go. That's how it's done. All you got to do is learn how to talk on the phone. Convey that you're professional. Convey that you're an expert in real estate. And, and communicate effectively and talk to people that are motivated to sell and boom, you're going to lock up deals and you're going to get paid. So let's go. It's how it's done, man. That is how it's done. So let's go ahead and, uh, and get that over to the title company and, um, and get working on that. But that is awesome. We just locked up an amazing deal on the recording, which is super amazing. So I think I'm going to make a few more calls in front of you guys. Um, but I also might end it right here, but I'm going to see who else we can get on the phone and show you a couple other live calls, but let me go file this contract and get escrow open with our title company. Let's go. We're back at it. I'm dialing these leads. Let's see. Let's see if we can get somebody to pick up. We'll do one more call. The hey, number you are calling no is answer. using RoboKiller to identify oh. and block unwanted callers. The number you are calling from has been blocked. You can choose Damn. to leave a small town anyways. Move on. We're going to have to call them with a different number to try to get a hold of them. But, but let's keep calling. Let's try to get one more on the phone, and then we'll wrap up this video. But uh, you see, uh, you know, I still got it. I can still talk to these sellers, even though I've been off the phones for three years. Still got it. Once a closer, always a closer. Hello? You have reached Norman House. Voicemail. You don't care, lady. You know. Let's move on to the next one. All right, let's keep calling. So, you know, there's a lot of things that go into sales, go into being a closer and all that. And uh, you just got to, you know, learn how to communicate effectively is the main thing. And if you can communicate effectively, you're going to do well in so many facets of life, not just with wholesaling real estate. If you can effectively portray a message, communicate effectively in life, you're just going to go so much farther. So that's why getting better at your sales skills, getting better at talking is key. 
Uh, if you want to learn more about sales skills and how to talk to motivated sellers on my channel, I have multiple other videos going over sales skills and training on that. So make sure to go check out those other videos and make sure to subscribe to the channel. Also, there's links in the description for all the tools you could possibly need for wholesaling real estate. So make sure to check out the links in the description down below because those will be very beneficial to you as well because it's literally every tool that I use in my business is available there. Also, uh, I love giving out free resources and free tools for you. So if you need a purchase contract, if you need an assignment contract, and if you want my cold calling script, just go to jacobblank.com slash free, jacobblank.com slash free, and download my cold calling script and my uh, purchase contract and my assignment contract for completely free. Also, if you're struggling to find good title companies to work with, go download my nationwide investor-friendly title company list for completely free at uh, jacobblank.com slash title. Hello, are you there? Hello? Yes. Hey, calling to give you the offer for your property. Uh, do you have a second to chat? I do. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, you filled out a form a few days ago looking for an offer. Um, I just want to ask you a couple quick questions while I calculate this offer. Is that okay? Yeah. Awesome. So first off, is there any particular reason why you're interested in selling the property? Just trying to buy some land and kind of go off grid. Go off, wants to go off grid. I hear that. You know, there's too much going on in this world right now. You got to kind of just, it's much better to be off on your own with all the crap going on. So. Uh, I hear that. Okay. Uh, so how old is the roof on this property? Um, so there's kind of two roofs to this house. One is, I don't want to say it's flat because it's, it is, but it's pitch too. Okay. And then there's a, an actual pitch roof. And the actual pitch roof is, I think, four years old. Okay, and you bought this property in 2017, is that right? Yes. The, the name on titles Highland Partners, Inc., is that right? Yep. Okay, sweet. Uh, so, so you said one roof was how old, and how old was the other one? So, there's... So before I bought the house, there was an addition put onto the house. Uh -huh. I, I don't know honestly when. Okay. So that roof was reshingled. I want to say it was like three to four years ago. No more than four. Okay. The flat roof, the original part of the house, which was a ranch style, is a flat roof. And I. It's, it hasn't been done since I've been there, so I'm not sure if it's original or if it's ever been if it was ever done before okay. I had been there. How much are you looking to get for the house? Uh, in the market for that area? Yeah. What are you looking to get? I know some people right around me that have been looking to sell, and they've been in touch with some realtors. I'm trying to stay away from the real real deal. Yeah, I hear um, you. Okay. How many people? Well, actually, all of them. Their houses are smaller than mine. Mm -hmm. Without a garage, without a basement, they're sitting on the slab, and they're looking at right around the hundred to hundred to five thousand. Hundred to hundred and five, you said. That's what they're looking at. Okay, so my house, my house has. I would say two thirds more square footage than theirs. Plus, I have a half basement and an attached garage. Maybe okay. not. Is your is your half basement finished or no? No, I'm finished. Okay. How much square feet is the house? It's showing me one thousand three hundred and sixty-eight. Is that accurate or no? Uh, I could be. I haven't physically measured it myself to verify. Okay. Uh, I see some pictures from when you bought the property and it was pretty outdated. Have you done some remodeling to it or no? Yeah, so it's got newer tile floors in the kitchen, uh, newer floors, new tile in the bathroom. Uh, there's been, there's some walls that have been taken down. 
this, that, and the other. Um, so, if you, uh, tell me what, if you tell me what pictures you're looking at, I can kind of walk you through it better that way. Okay. What type of countertops do you have in the kitchen? Are they laminate for mica or are they granite? They're just for mica. Okay. For mica. Um, and so, since they're one in a hundred, how much are you looking to get? You said a hundred and five, or I'd like to be right around the hundred mark myself because there still is a few things that need to get done in the house. Okay. With some miscellaneous trim. Um, I'm just trying to think. There's some miscellaneous. There's just some miscellaneous stuff that's still got to be done. Okay. Um. Okay. Yeah, with us, we'll buy it in as is condition, so you don't really got to do anything to it. Uh, but okay, you said a two car detached garage? One car attached. Okay. Okay. Let me see here. So, you know, if you sold it with a realtor, you'd have to pay closing costs and commissions. You know that, right? Yeah, that's yeah. why I'm trying to avoid a realtor. Yeah, so with a realtor, let's say you sold it for 100 or 110 with a realtor, it's going to be 3% to your agent, 3% to the buyer's agent, and then roughly 1% in closing costs. So that's like 7%. So that would be 7,700. So that's how much? it would probably cost you in, in commissions and fees if you sold it on the market around $8,000, between seven to $8,000 in costs. Okay. So let's say you sold it um, for 100,000 on the market and we minus out the 8,000 in fees, that would put you at 92,000 net to you in your pocket. Um, let me ask you this. What if I was able to do, uh, let me see. Let me plug a one last number. You're gonna have, yeah. You're going to have to bear with me. You're going to have to bear with me a little bit. I'm starting to go through a little bit of a bad section of uh, signal. You're good. So no I, worries. Might, I might not hear everything you're saying. I might have bad to uh, repeat it. All good. No worries. Um, I'm just running my final numbers here, but I think my offer will be pretty comparable to what you would uh, get. Uh, if you sold it on the market with a realtor. So one second. Um, let me just plug this final number into my calculator real quick. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're cutting out a little bit, but I can still hear you. I'm just running my final numbers. Hopefully, when I got my offer ready for you, you're at a better location. We'll see. What company are you with again? National Home Buyers. We're with National Home Buyers. Um, okay, yeah, I, I thought it. Okay. Yeah, so like I said, if you sold it on the market for a hundred thousand, you would still have to do some cleanup too. And so I didn't add those costs in. Or like if they do an inspection on the market, you might have to fix some things. But like in just commissions and closing costs, you're looking at around seven, eight grand. So if we take a hundred and we minus out the eight grand in costs that you would pay, that puts you at ninety two thousand that you would net. What if I was able to pay you? 80,000 net to you. We cover all the costs. We buy it in as is condition, no real inspections, none of the headaches of dealing with a realtor. 80,000 cash in your pocket. What do you think about that? You're a lot closer than the last company I talked to. What did the last company offer you? I'm not going to mention that number. It was... they, they tried throwing like five different numbers at me and I I pretty much told the guy I had no no more time to speak to him. Yeah, over here so, with me, I know what I'm doing, so I'm not gonna mess with you like that. <laughs> we're we're professional over here, so 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 that being said, you said we're not too far off. Uh, 
I might be able to get you a little bit better than that, but not not much probably. That's pretty much the most I can do. I really don't want to be. I need less than like ninety grand. I want to be as close to ninety as possible. Okay. Um. Let me look at one more thing real quick. And then, so, like, because I still own, I still own forty, little under forty thousand. Okay. So obviously, that's gotta be paid first. Yep. And then you receive what and everything gonna, after that, that. And then whatever's left is what I'm gonna have to go and buy my piece of property and get rolling on what is what I want to do. That's right. Um, so let me see here. Let me look at a couple other things real quick. Okay. Let me put you on a brief hold. I'm going to just run to the back office into the finance department and, uh, see if I can get them to approve any higher on it. I'm going to just put you on a, a, three, a quick hold real quick. Let me let me ask you a quick uh, yeah. couple quick questions. Uh huh. Now, when you guys buy it, what do you do? We we fix it up and rent it and hold it. Usually, sometimes we'll fix it up and resell it, but usually we hold on to it and rent it for a while. We'll hold on to them for like seven to ten years and then sell them. Well, I'll tell you this: for this house is like. The, the area that this house is in, houses do not last long. Yeah. And I haven't even put this on the market yet. Right, right. There was one that was uh, not very far from me. I mean, within an easy walking distance, probably take you three to four minutes to walk there at max. Um, it's located right next to the elementary uh, middle school and high school. Um, it's yeah. a good school district. Quiet neighborhood. Good people. Not a lot of trouble. Not a lot of bull crap like that. Yeah. And the outfit was, it, it wasn't even on the market a month. Yeah. And it sold. Do you know, what, that's how, do you know what address that is? I don't know the exact address. Let me ask uh, you this: was, is, is the house is the house still brown, or have you painted the outside? No, I haven't painted nothing on the outside yet. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, let it's me. Little, let me. One of those things I just. So it's actually it's two colors: it's brown on the front, white, but then it's really every it's yeah. white everywhere else. Okay. I just haven't. Haven't come up with a color yet or something like that. To, let me do this. Let me put you on a brief hold and let me run into the finance department and see if I can get them to push the offer up at all. Let me just put you on a brief hold real quick. I'm going to run to the back office real quick. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll be right back with you. Stay, stay on the phone with me. Okay. One minute. Absolutely. All right. Gregory, are you still there or no? Okay. All right. So he can't hear us now. Um, this is a deal, but there isn't that much data. And what I mean by that is there's not a tremendous amount of comparable properties that have sold in the area because it's kind of a smaller town um, to where it makes it a little bit harder to pin down a definitive answer on, yes, this is a deal. Um, but what you like to do is uh, put them on a hold, act like you're talking to a finance department for approval. So that way they don't feel like you're lowballing them. And so that way you have, uh, you're not, you're not negotiating live anymore. And what I mean by that is we're not negotiating live. He's not saying, oh, that doesn't work for me. And then I'm instantly upping my offer. No, first I'm putting him on a hold, going to the back office and then raising my offer. So now I'm slowing down the negotiation, not negotiating live. And this will help us not bring our offer up super fast and not raise it a lot because we're negotiating slower. We're not negotiating live. We've slowed down the negotiation. So let's go back with him and, uh, we're going to offer him a couple thousand more. Um, I just want to make sure this looks like it works. Yeah, and it does. Hey, are you still there with me? Yes, I am. 
So they're saying 82,500. And uh, again, we're covering all the closing costs. So, you know, nothing's going to come out of your pocket other than what you owe on the property. This offer is net to you, cash in your pocket. As is condition, you know, no real inspections. All the headaches are gone. We make it really easy for you. What do you think about that? 82,500 cash. Uh, better than 80, but not quite what I was hoping for. Um, so what is kind of like move on current for you guys? Yeah, so, oh, so uh, how much time would you need? Uh, usually what we do like to do is we like you to be moved out of the property on the day of closing. Clo closing. So the day you get paid is when you move out the property. But sometimes if you need it a few days after that, we're able to work something out like that. But usually it's best to just have the property be vacant on the day that we're uh, closing on it. Um, and then, you know, we could set that close date out 30 days from now or, or longer than that if you need. How much time would you, would you need before the close? Uh, I'd have to kind of discuss that with my fiance, obviously. Yeah. Okay. So she. Plus, I have two kids, so it's kind of a. <laughs> you have two kids too. Well, yeah. So it's a little bit of a. That'd be a little bit of a scramble. So there's. And obviously, I work full time, so. Yeah. So there's so there's other decision makers too on it, you know. Um. So okay. And obviously, closer closer to the end of school being out would obviously make a huge difference. Yeah. Well, we're not too far away from that, are we? So that's good. No, we're not. Um. So that's like we're talking sixty days or less than. When do they get out? May, mid, middle of May, right? No, not here. They don't get out. June? June, I believe. Okay, well, we're talking 60 days. That's not an issue. Um, so, yeah, like I could write up the agreement right now, email it over to you, get the finance department to put the 82500 aside um, for you. We could get it all locked into place, get started on it. Um, would you would you be open to starting the process on it today? Well, I'm on my way home from work right now, so I need to actually get home, talk to my fiance, okay, and then. Um, so I the Highland Partners, that's my finance guy. Uh huh. I will have to talk. I will also have to talk to him too. Okay, your seller financing it was was he the owner previously or? No, he bought it because I wanted it. Got it, and he just it's like private money. Okay. Yeah, he, he's just uh, I don't know what you want to call him. Lender. Got it. Somebody, he, he's got a bunch of properties, like almost two hundred or something throughout New York State. Okay. All right. Well, uh, yeah. So. You'll be able to talk to the fiance today. When do you think you'll be able to talk to him? Um, I'm hoping I will be able to give him a call this afternoon also. Okay. Um, you want to pin down when he's going to do these things. So that way, you know, it's going to happen. Talk, here. So he's definitely going to want to, he's definitely going to be looking to make sure you guys are legit. We are. I can send you information about our company too. Um, I believe I have your email. Um, let me see if I have it one second. Um, I have for your email. Yes. All right. So I'll send you info about our company and I'll also send over the agreement to your email. Um, and I'll just put the like mid June on it for it. Um, just for now and we can change that. Um, but yeah. And then now, uh, with, with, the, with the agreement, uh huh. 
So you're buying as is. Yep. Now, is it... Is there, what am I looking for? Um, so obviously I'm selling and then what I have left over is what I'm taking to go do with what we want to do. Yeah, anything you owe on the property comes out of the 82500 Now is there a way to get access to any of that? before the actual move out date no but no but sometimes what we can do is we can do what's called a post possession hold back and we could give you like uh all the money except five thousand dollars and then give you 14 days after you receive that money uh to move out and then once you move out you'll receive that last remaining five thousand it's called a post possession hold back and we could do that and give you like two weeks with the money, with the majority of the money. And then once you move out, you'll get that last 5,000. All right. But other than right, that, right. Same, same time here. Give me just a second. So post possession. So probably 82, five. We would just hold back five grand for two weeks till you move out. And then you would get that last five grand. So let's say we closed on it on June first. You'd get you'd get seventy seven thousand five hundred, and then two weeks later you'd get that last five thousand. Once you moved out, we could do something like that, but primarily so it's I get the seventy seven five before move out. And then you have two weeks to move out, and you get that last five thousand as long as you move out. Okay. Now, uh, don't worry. I'll be moving out. Yeah, <laughs> and then primarily, you know, it's kind of like when you when you sell a car, you you don't go to a dealership, you sell the car, and then say, "Hey, can I drive it for another week?" No, you know what I mean. It, it's similar like that. It's like you sell it, it's sold, you got to be out. But we can do that holdback for sure. And okay. Because uh, the only reason I'm asking is that's kind of. That's my startup money to do, you know, to get else. my land and that and the other, but yeah, I mean, I can come, I can come up with an apartment to rent that and the other if need be for a little bit until I find the right piece of property and do what I got to do. So, all right. Well, I just emailed you my information. Um, do you think you'll be able to talk with the the wife and then the the guy that you got the loan from today and then call me back? I am gonna try. Okay. And, and if do I, I call you back on this number? Do I call you back on this number right here? Yep. Call me back on this number, and I just emailed you my information as well. And then, uh, if I don't hear from you, I'll give you a call tomorrow. Okay. Sounds good. Um. All right. Well, I'm, well, I'm working tomorrow. You might not get me like instantly because uh, it's a big all these warehouse, and you tend not to have very good service inside. Okay, all good. I'll just call uh, you. You have to leave a voicemail or just try to call me back the second time. Okay, will do. All right, well, again, my name is Jacob. I'm with National Home Buyers. I look forward to working with you, and uh, we'll talk a little bit later today or tomorrow. Okay, Tom, good. All right, thanks, Greg. You have a good one. Bye. Thank you. you too. Bye. There we go. Another amazing conversation. So, there was a few things that I did in there. I leveraged the finance department. I leveraged putting them on hold so that way I wasn't negotiating live. I um, I uh, figured out exactly when he was gonna do what he was saying he needed to do. So it was clear there was other decision makers, his fiance with this property. So I'm like, I wanted to pin down, when are you gonna be talking to her? Then he has a lender that loan that gave him the loan for the property he needs to talk to. When are you gonna talk to him? Pin down the game plan so that way you're creating a plan on when they're going to get the green light to sign on the dotted line so you can lock up the deal. Um, and then always set, always set an expectation of when we're going to talk next. When are we going to talk next? And that's what I did either later today or tomorrow. And I'm going to go write his name up on the whiteboard so I remember to call him and uh, put him in the proper place in the CRM. I sent him over the contract. 
Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully we lock, we lock up that deal as well. But other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video of me talking to motivated sellers. I know a lot of you have been wanting me to do a video like this, so I'm glad I finally did it. As you can see, all you got to do is be able to communicate effectively and learn some of these skills when it comes to negotiation, building rapport, sales skills, learn these skills that mixed with good communication skills and you are going to have success on the phone with motivated sellers and you're going to lock up deals. I have no doubt about it. But that being said, uh, if you liked the video, make sure to go down below, hit the red button and subscribe to the channel. It helps me grow the channel so I can reach more people and impact more lives. And then also there is links in the description down below for every single tool that I use in my business when it comes to wholesaling real estate. So make sure to go check that out. And then again, those free tools that I was talking about, go download my purchase contract, my assignment contract, and my cold calling script for completely free at jacobblank.com slash free. And then also go download my nationwide investor friendly title company list at jacobblank.com slash title. So if you've been looking for title companies and it's been hard to find a title company that is good, that works good with wholesalers and does assignment transactions and works with investors, just go to jacobblank.com slash title, download my nationwide investor friendly title company list. But other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to like the video. And other than that, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.